Welcome back, everybody. Rob again with uh, Food, Wine, and Whiskey, and we are back for part two. Uh, we are going to uh, jump right into it from where we left off last Monday and get back into this conversation, and uh, here we go. Enjoy the rest of the show. That's the magic of the podcasting world is, you know, we took a, what, 10, 15-minute break, yeah. and, and it's like that in the podcast. Five, oh, yeah. five, se- five seconds. Yeah. Have a little snack, you yeah. know, yeah. You know get, get our palate refreshed. Open two bottles, poured a couple glasses for each of us, doing a little wine here. Wine comparison. Mm -hmm. It's not really fair. It's not. Uh, We're doing a a Chianti Reserva and a uh, Brunello, so we've made the transition from from France to Italy. Yeah. Um, Sangiovese grape being one that you and I, Carter, really enjoy. Oh, yeah. Have you had a Sangiovese? I don't think I have. Never have. I don't think I have. So what you have in your glass is uh, two expressions of Sangiovese, one being a Chianti Classico Reserva, and then one being a Brunello di Montalcino. Okay. And the reason I say it's it's unfair to begin with because Brunellos are always it's the king There's, of the Sangiovese. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. But in this instance, in this comparison, we're doing it would be a little more fair or a little more kind of uh, eye to eye, if you will. Uh, if they were both from the same vintage, you know. Yeah. But the Brunello is a 2009, so it's got some good age on it. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, where we have a Chianti uh, Classical Reserva from 16. 16 is a fantastic year yes. in Italy. Some of the best wines. On that note, if you find anything from Italy and on the shelf in 2016, buy some buy it. Whether it's Chianti or Barolo or Brunello's, 2016 was just a fantastic year in Italy. So, uh, uh, if you see those and you're looking, you know, you're, you're starting to go, what, what vintage should I buy? If you see different vintages on, on the, on the shelf, cause you might see some 16s or 17s or something like that. Definitely buy all the 16s. 16s. That's where sure. you want to be. And, and, and a lot of 16s are sitting there right now. Yeah. So good time okay. to stock up for sure. So, um, I really like San Giovese is a uh, it's a thinner skin grape, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's a little bit more delicate. It doesn't grow well in a lot of areas, uh, <laughs> but it grows extremely well in Tuscany, uh, okay. and that's where all of these the, these two uh, wines come from is Tuscany, um, and yeah, I mean you've got Chianti, Chianti Classico, Chianti Classico Reserva. Uh, and then, you know, just a quick PSA, never buy a Chianti. Okay. Don't buy a Chianti, but buy a Chianti Classica and a Chianti Classico Reserva. So what's the, what's the, is that a, is that a regional difference or what's no, the just quality, quality, just general quality gotcha. and, and, and age too, right? I mean, well, Chianti and Chianti Classico are going to have similar age. The Reserva has got an extra year on it. Right. So, right. Uh, but when you get Chianti and Chianti Classico, it's just. It's going to come down to quality. Yeah. So get a Chianti Classico if you're getting a Chianti. Okay. Um, That's your baseline. Okay. Yeah. Chianti Classico. And, uh, and then, then you start getting into the villages. Uh, like, so uh, uh, a Vino Nobile, uh, that's going to be in the village of what, Malticino? Is that like, am I saying it right? Or, uh, no, Nobile is going to be uh, Montepulciano. Montepulciano. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And then Brunello de, Malt- uh, de Malticino, that's the village where, or that's the area where... Brunello de Montalcino. so Brunello of Montalcino. Of Montalcino. The town yeah. is Montalcino. Yeah, and there's a slight difference in uh, the Brunello because it's, a, it's, it's called a, uh, it's a grosso uh, rather than the just general Sangiovese grape. Uh, it's, it's similar, but a little bit different. It's fat. Yeah, it's a fat. It's a it's a fat gen, San Giovese. Gotcha. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, all right. So, Sean, you get to take these two, which are both right. San Giovese. Which one are we? Which one are we starting with there? Knows them both. I, I wrote a number okay. on them, so I know which ones they are. Uh, it's in green in the middle of one somewhere on the glass, right by your thumb, straight above two inches. You should see a line. Did I see uh, it? Yeah, yeah, I got the one right here, and then you'll have the other mm-hmm. one be two. So, knows those. Tell us just on the nose which one you think is more pleasant, more appealing to you. And then we'll, we'll go ahead in a second. After we talk about the nose, we'll come back and uh, taste them and see what you think there. Now, again, this isn't really to say which it, it is and it isn't to say which one you like better. Um, you can do that. The question would be, you know, here's what I would say, and I don't know if you've been told this already. Anytime you're tasting wine, 
and uh, seeing, you know, kind of judging that wine, you should always only be looking at the quality. Is this a quality wine? Because it may be a wine that you go, it's not for me, not, not something that I like, not a style that I'm drawn to, mm-hmm. but it's still a very good wine mm-hmm. versus just going, I like it or I don't like it. Because right. if you just like it or don't like it, you're just judging a wine based on your palate. doesn't mean that wine's not good. It could be still very oh, good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. So whatever one you like better, the, the, the key here would be, would, do, you, do you think they're both quality wines? And then you can pick your, mm. your favorite. I, I like them both, like, on the nose here. I think from an initial, like, an initial smell here, like, on on one, like, it's it's more initially pleasant, but it's not. There's a lot more complexity to number two, like, on the nose to me. So describe the, the nose that you're getting on number two. If you had so, to, to use some adjectives, what would they be that you'd sling around? N- number two smells, to, to me, smells more aged. That's what she said. Stop calling her number two. She has a name. <laughs> uh, I, I think... Got a man it's, deep it's, in thought. Yeah, so he, he definitely. N- n- number two smells a little earthier uh-huh. than number all right, one. All right. I would say. Okay. Like, I was hoping that would might be a description that you use. A little more barnyard. Yeah, exactly. Kind of wet hay a little bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like Mushrooms. Um, uh, I'm getting kind of like, uh, you know, dirt, mushrooms, mm-hmm. funk, you know, that yeah, kind it's, of it's a Yeah, it's a little funkier, a little earthier. Uh, number <laughs> one smells a little more just kind of generally fruit forward. I would agree with that assessment. Though, I mean, number one has some some degree of complexity to it as well. I mean, uh, I, I'm i definitely getting some minerality up to it. Definitely getting my favorite sn- sneaker smell of old world. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, the fruit is more up front and, and the, the number one. Yeah, yeah. But you're right. You still do get the, in, in the back side. You get a little bit of that earthiness. You yeah. can still pull it out. And I think yeah. that's just you can lot. still pull it out. It's just yeah. this is it's way more pronounced with number two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. That's it. So on the nose, would you say guess which one's which? And then it, obviously you can you know once you taste them, you can change your mind if you need to. I I feel like number two is the um, substantially more aged one. That's the Brunello, right? Okay. In in my in my head right now, okay. Just, uh, I mean, it, it just so number it, one would be the Chianti Reserva. Yeah. Number okay. number one being the Chianti Reserva, number two being the the Brunello here. Well, let's taste them. What while Sean's tasting through them, let's me and you, Carter, start popping off some uh, some wine regions and particular wines from those regions that uh, would comprise his five hundred dollar budget uh, to get him a little old world you know starter kit going. Yeah, so uh, so I think Brunello, um, for me, I put Brunello on the list, uh, on my list. Uh, I also put uh, Barolo, uh, that's in the Piedmont area. Uh, Barbaresco is on my list. I also... Oh, I thought you were going to kind of give me your, your, you know, like, start in France, and then I would go here, and you can get average cost this much. Like, I'll start. Like, oh, I yeah, would yeah, say yeah. France... Shatch enough to pop, you can get a good one for about 40 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, you can sp- any of these categories we give you, Sean, you can spend a lot more, but you don't have to. Just like Napa, you can get a $50 cab or you can get a $500 cab. Yep. But just in, in a range that you get good wine at these types of costs from these regions. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, I, I mean, in France, definitely Rhone. I love Rhone. Uh, I'd say. Um, and and Chateau Neuf de Pop is Rhone, just so you know, it's the Southern Rhone. Yeah, okay. Northern Rhone is how I. Yeah, Northern Rhone. Um, uh, you know, just to mention, I I particularly like Syrah. Uh, Northern Rhone happens to be very Syrah heavy, um, or Shiraz. Gr- Grenache heavy down <laughs> in the south. Yeah, but um, like we we've got a bottle open right now from Cornas, uh, which is an area up there. But there's Hermitage. There's you know Cote Roti. Cote Roti. 
you know, different growing areas in uh, Cote Rhone. Yeah, it's a quality bottle. But um, but yeah, so anything Rhone Valley, I think you're you, you know, you can live in that bubble, and you're gonna have a nice fifty, sixty dollar like you, you can go nice at fifty or sixty dollars. Or you can go budget at like twenty five and still get a good quality. Yeah, I would say twenty five to thirty five is really good. Mm-hmm. And you get to that fifty sixty dollar range, you're getting a banger wine. Oh yeah, it's, a, it's more than nice. It's really a banger wine. And and that wine, you could lay it down for years. Yeah, if you want. Oh to. really? Yeah, okay. like th- that's the quality of of grape that you're getting there. You know, uh, that the quality of wine is very high. Yeah. A, a, a Cote de Rhone or something, you know, you're going to spend 25 35 bucks, which is still great value. I put it at about 28 You can get a good one. A Cote Roti, I think, you know, a good price point, you can get around 60 bucks. Yeah. I mean, you can obviously go, you know, up to 100 bucks, but I think you can get a really good one for around 60 bucks, which is a, a really good price. Staying in, in, in uh, France, I think if you go to Bordeaux, and people think Bordeaux, they automatically think, you know, the, the five houses and these first growths and these – you know, Latours and Rothschild, and but there's they're there and they're very expensive, but uh, there's also some very good Bordeaux that you can get left bank and right bank. And do you know the difference, Sean? Left bank, right bank. I do not. Carter's going to educate you. Okay, so left <laughs> bank. Uh, it, it, I'm going to really generalize it here. Left bank tends to be more cab, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon uh, heavy. Uh, right bank tends to be more Merlot heavy. Okay. Um, both excellent. Uh, both have great quality wines. Um, don't dismiss Merlot just because of the the movie Sideways. Uh, <laughs> like because Paul Giamatti, uh, he's like, I'm not drinking fucking Merlot or like whatever. Oh, well, that's what know. he says. Um, don't what dismiss. Is, what Merlot. does he want to drink in that movie? I can't remember. Pinot Noir. Yeah, that's that's. That's when Pinot Noir just kind of... Scotty. That's why pig vomit is not, not my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, um, but, yeah, so, like, they're both really good styles. I, I mean, Bordeaux, you can definitely break the bank on it if you want to. If you want to get with one of those first growth 1855 classifications from Napoleon, you know, yeah. And there's some great second growths from those those producers as well. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, sure. You can get substantially less, so... Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can, you can... If you have all the money in the world... You can you can spend if, all the money in the world if you're Carter. <laughs> that is not true. That is not it, true. It, it, it is not true. It is an expensive taste. I do have expensive taste. I, I do know. I do know how much money Carter makes. <laughs> yeah. The other two regions that we talked and about earlier, uh, Beaujolais and Burgundy, I think are two that yeah, are worth and exploring. Burgundy, uh, very good. Um, I, you know, and, and we're just talking about red wines, but there's a whole world of white wines in France that are yeah, very, this is very good. Um, all about red wines today. But I think, you know, what we're trying to do is get to these old world countries mm-hmm. and then just some of the main regions. You can, you can go deep. You can get into some sub regions mm-hmm. and some different regions that have Cap Franc and some other things. But this is, I think, kind of good starting points to explore. These are the big regions that people know about where you're, you're going to be in that Bordeaux style. You're going to be that Syrah or the Grenache, Mouvedre. You're going to be in that Pinot Noir. Mm-hmm. Gamay we're throwing in, which I don't know if you've ever even heard of Gamay before tonight, had you? I have not. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's a grape that I think is fantastic, uh, but it's very, again, I'm going to say it's similar to uh, yeah, Pinot Noir. Pinot, Pinot Noir, I think yeah. it's uh, you know very close. So I think those are your regions that uh, you'll get from uh, uh, France. Uh I'm, I'll be the first to tell you, Carter. Spain, I don't know a lot about Spanish wines, but there's one region that I absolutely love in the grape I'm a huge fan of, uh, Rioja and Tempranillo. And you can get some fantastic uh, value there, and not just for current releases, but for aged Tempranillo. Aged $30, uh, $30 and under, you can get, I think it's with, uh, gosh, the classification that they put on it. I, uh, I, I, I can never remember it. Okay, so you can get, like, a Grand Reserva Rioja, which is, like, I think the top of the mark over there, um, and for, like, $30 or under. Yeah, turn, you can spend more, but... Turn that one around for, right in front of you, Sean. Yes, right one. So that, that's a $40 bottle, and that's this recently is, purchased, and it's, what, what, 2009? Is that what that 2009, is? yeah. And so that's on the shelf now for 40 bucks. Really? I mean, you can't, you, you're not going to find a, a 2009 anything on the shelf in, in uh, California. And I think for somebody who, who drinks 
Cabernet Sauvignon. That's not. That's that's not a. Uh, I mean, it's a very different expression. You know, very different grape. Yeah, I don't think it's as big and bold as you know your. I don't, your... but but I think it's not a bad transition. You know, like really? you, yeah, I do. But uh, but well, I've also seen a lot of California producers mixing in Tempranillo and uh, red blends as well. Okay, I you, I haven't seen that. I'm a, I'd be curious on that. Yeah, I've I've seen that a little bit more maybe okay. in the Paso area. I think. Uh, where I'm seeing Tempranillo being grown is in Texas. Uh, there's some producers. Out is in anything Texas. good there? Yeah, you know, I actually have one I could open up for us that you, you can okay. tell me if it's good. Am anyway, I allowed, we're getting am, off track. Am I allowed to taste these wines? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Absolutely, taste them. Oh, was I not allowed to taste? Because no, I no, I wanted we, to taste. We wanted to give you time to taste. Yeah, got you. So that's France and Spain. I don't know anything else in Spain. There are some good white wines that come out of Spain. I know your wife, Julie, is a big white wine mm-hmm. lady, so mm. I'm not sure if she's on this journey with you. Is she along for the ride, or she got some input? Oh, yeah, she absolutely, she always has some input. Okay. That's, so uh, I think white wines from these regions are, are fun to explore, and that might be another show. Mm. Carter, he's deep in thought. Yep. I, uh, I, I think we pulled the cork just at the right moment. That's... Close. It's close. <laughs> See, I'm. You know, one thing uh, I will note. Uh, you know, uh, this is definitely not a fair comparison for somebody who drinks wine because that's not a good wine. No, it's it's gone. Yeah, it's oxidized and gone. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah. Okay, now we can open up another Brunello. I mean, to be fair, yeah. yeah yeah, we should, yeah. probably. Um, sometimes it's unfortunate, but corks are not necessarily the best way to seal a bottle. Uh, and it's cheap, though. It, I mean, honestly, the, the synthetic ones are better for, like, mm-hmm. for, for overall. Uh, but everybody has this whole, like, perception that a cork is, is quality. Uh, sometimes it's just not the best way to... Well. Just happens. Yeah, it happens. It's unfortunate. Uh, for me, in my years of drinking wine, being into wine about 15 years now, or something, nah, about 12 years, uh, never had a corked wine until this last week I've had two. <laughs> Have you really? <laughs> yeah. Which is crazy. So, I, I anyway. Mean, it's nuts, but I hope- one, one thing I'll say about, like, you know, if you're looking at the wine, um, you can tell an aged wine – it turns start turning brown, mm-hmm. you know. It starts getting kind of that, like the red starts dying down. So oh, no. yeah, and n- getting... number isn't so number two is the Brunello, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Let, let's let's do this. Let's open up another one for you, and uh, because you know you want him to try it. Have you ever had a Brunello? Uh, I mean, I, never had I, I just did, right? but I mean, it's kind of yeah. That's not a good example yeah, 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 of what yeah. it should be. So let's let's do this. It, real quick. it smelled. It, it actually smelled okay. Like yeah, to me, it does smell okay. Like it, I, I, I thought on this nose. I still think on the nose it's corked. I yeah. don't know. I, I think it's very barn. And then I drink it, and I'm going, "Yep, that's corked." Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, it's the Chianti over here. I guess number one is I'm it very high acidity. And you know, drinking a cork wine can kill you. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, it can <laughs> totally murder you. <laughs> All right, well, let's open up a Brunello. We'll be right back. Yeah. Okay, now we're back, and we have another Brunello poured. <laughs> this one is not turned. I can already tell you that. I haven't even noticed it. Is it pretty good? Yeah. It, um, the the nose on this is so good. Oh, yeah. See, now, see, this is good. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. That 2009, for me, right when I nose it, got that kind of wet dog kind of smell on it, and that's why I went, okay, court. Well, you know, I get it, sometimes on aged wine though. I get a lot of barnyard on it. You know, barnyard totally different. From yeah, I, I don't know, but um, but yeah, this is good. Okay, so but and it's a sixteen, so we have a Brunello from sixteen, and we have a Chianti Reserva from sixteen. So, how's this one on the nose? Obviously, it doesn't have the age, so you're not going to get that kind of more earthy kind of notes on it because it's still very young. It's still definitely less. Fruit forward versus this, uh, I guess, which I now know is the Chianti, right? Yeah. Uh, mm. But oh, it, it still smells a little earthier. 
to and this, this is freshly poured, so give it 15 minutes, you know. This will be fun to let, you know, we poured a little to, to do this portion of the, the episode on, but uh, I think we let this sit for a little while, and we have a little bit of this later. Uh, this will Dude. be nice. I'm down. Uh, yeah, I don't want to influence your opinions. Well, uh, I, I, yeah, I don't oh, think Did you already sip? Oh, man. Oh. Did you already yeah. sip? You didn't see his reaction? He took a sip and went, oh, man. <laughs> I don't, this is just... <sighs> Oh, it's and so then good. Followed up with, I don't want to influence your. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, but my goodness, that is delicious. That's what she said. That is really good. That is. And this is why I love Brunello. Oh, my God. I haven't tasted it yet. Pretty good. Well, okay, so well, let's talk about Italy. You know, some, some hot it. spots, you know, to, to hit. Now, I. I I'm gonna I'm gonna sip it now and then sip it in 15 minutes. I'll okay, yeah, I think that's a great way to do it. I'm gonna let this sit in the glass a little bit too. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna nose it, take a little sip, and then I want to see it in about 15 minutes, see how it's changing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so Italy. I mean, both Rob and I are love Tuscany. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's good. Um, so, so if if you could only pick one country, Italy. consume wine from, ever again, Italy. Yeah, for me, Italy. Probably Italy. I don't know. France has got some really badass shit. Too. The answer is either Italy or France, though. Did yeah. I pick one country? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. If you give me Italy or France, or yeah, it's one of those. I mean, just any me, country. Italy. Yeah. I, I I may go France, maybe, just because I really really like Northern Rhone Syrah. I think is yeah, but you got to remember Super Tuscans use a lot of Syrah now. I know. I. I you, you can't go wrong. No, I you know, it, 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 It's a loaded question because it, it, it. I think you get probably more value in Italy, though. Um, I, I, I think that's a maybe a fair statement. I don't know. I, I think value wise, they're pretty similar. I mean, I think across the board, they're pretty similar. Yeah. Uh, I think there's, you know, like Napa, good diversity, all kinds of wines being made. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it just uh, comes down to preference. You know, what's a style that you like more? Yeah. And for me, I probably lean more towards the Italian wines. A big part of that is probably because I, I love the Italian cuisine, you know, whether mm-hmm. it be pastas or risottos or, you know, polenta or, you know, cured meats and braised yeah. meats and all that kind of stuff. And pizza, you know, mm-hmm. love pizza. Absolutely. So uh, I think because I'm such a big fan of their food, I, I, I'm drawn more to their wines. So. I get the statement, uh, but there's some really badass French dishes too. No, no, no. There's, There's French sauces. There's Coca-Bon French is techniques. badass. French Wait, so, so you, you don't like French, no, no, French I food? You, I always have the argument with Carter that uh, quickly name me three to five Italian dishes that you can think of. Oh, you can name way more than France. Okay. Right? Yeah. And that's my point. France but, but is France great has on technique, the, exactly. sauces, and pastries, bakery. Yep. I mean, when you start t- thinking about dishes, you can go Cordon Bleu. Mm-hmm. You can go... Go on. Now go ahead, Sean. Fill in after that. Bearnaise. That's a sauce. Sauce. Yeah. That's what I said. Sauces and pastries. A lot of sauces, a lot of pastries, a lot of uh, beef bourguignon. uh, Russian. (laughs) The French stole it. (laughs) Okay. Well, that's that's also. uh, uh, But you get my point. Oh, gosh. What's the freaking stroganoff, right? That was a Russian dish that the French stole and made it way way better. Yeah. but you know, like I Croissant. also, well, I've here's the thing, right? We have a ton of Italian immigrants in the United States. So sure. We have a ton of Italian restaurants in the United States. Sure. Like it, it, it's just it's a thing, right? There was a, a bunch of uh, Italian immigration. I don't think there was that much French immigration yeah. into the United States. So yeah. the the French cuisine I like is like the French like the French fusion cuisine, like Vietnamese food. Yes. Uh, yeah, 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 totally right? agree. Yeah, like, totally agree. Like, I'll take a, a just a solid street bun me all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? No, like, totally. That that I'm down with. Yeah. And, and I'm not trying to pick on the French. But I'm it's just, the French bread with, you know, the local Vietnamese. Yeah. I mean, know. who doesn't like a croque madame? But, but, but it's fair. It's but good. Good. Let, let's be honest. Would you not agree that there's a lot of American people who have opened Italian Restaurants I or Mexican agree. restaurants or other restaurants. Why aren't there a lot of American people opening French restaurants? 
I have make? You, is it too well, hard to do? I mean, uh, no. What's uh, what's the dude in? Uh, I mean, Chicago it could be technique. Uh, Grant Atchitz or whatever. Yeah. Uh, he, he does a bunch of like super high, you know, high technical French techniques. This? It's, it, I, it's I mean, I, I think it's like the the French French technique in in, in America is like super four star. Like you, you're not going to go to like a you know four or five star. Like I agree. Like you, if you, you go, uh, you know. so would you say in New York, L A. I mean, Houston being the fourth largest city, but maybe there is in Houston. I just don't know about it. Some really nice French type bistro restaurants that are cranking out some really authentic. Um, yeah, I mean good. here we. Uh, um, I think uh, Brasserie Nineteen. I think is a is a pretty good You're French restaurant here. Um, I think uh, I, I, we don't have a ton in Houston. That's the one in Friendswood, right? Uh, that's the one that's. Uh, oh no, Friends. I, now, okay. Uh, There's a little hidden like kind of French gym in. Friendswood. I know what I forget you're the name. About I forget there. the name of what I'm talking about, but. Uh, and then that's probably the best the best French food I've had in Houston. Actually, so one of the one of the better ones. Uh, there's a place in like uh, Kingwood or something. It's called like Chez Nou. It's like in a neighbor. It's like in a neighborhood. Oh no, no, Julie and I went there. It's good too. The the one in France was better, but it, that place is is very good. We had a like a, a dinner there recently. And, and, and one of Rob's favorite appetizers is French based appetizer. What is it? Escargot. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. making escargot. Yeah. No, it's, I usually make it with an Italian yeah, the, dish after. I, I, mean, I, can't, I can't remember the name of the... I can't remember the name of the restaurant. When we went there. It's like it's like literally in like an old... like Almost like an old church like in a neighborhood. And it's delicious. It's in King. And I'm, I'm, hey, look, I'm giving the French a hard time, and I know I am. But I, I'm just... Honestly, I wish I knew more about French cuisine. I don't. Uh, well, and, and, and as like, far as as far as wine goes, I mean, I think you've the, taken a plunge into champagne pretty hard. It's oh yeah, yeah, I the, love. I champagne. think French cuisine kind of got a knock once like animal rights started being a thing because like <laughs> half, half the anyway. stuff they do is just like, all right, you just like you take this animal and then you uh, constrain curb it stomp and it and then <laughs> flip it on its side. And <laughs> oh, that's so thank, bad. Thank you, Peter. Uh, yeah. yeah, but um, no, I mean, you know. I, Anyway, anyway, it's it's it, we we talk about this all the time. So you, you know, oh, so not I, a new argument. This is not a new argument. No, yeah, no, no, no. I keep beating it up. Uh, <laughs> that I, we got off, kind of got on that tangent because I said the food in Italy is what draws me to their wine. I do love French wine, uh, great wines. Yeah, but uh, I just wish they had some food to pair it with. There you go. Carter. This Take sounds like a like one year from today. God. <laughs> instead, instead of doing it at a table here, y'all like there should be like a go to Spain. Yeah, do Oof. that. Go through the regions. There's some good food. That's yeah. a good food. Have the food and wine pairing. Then go to France. Can I just get fly you? over France and just head to Italy? But you, you need <laughs> you need your experience, you know, right? You need to go. Hey, all you wine snobs that maybe listen to this show, just just remember, Rob doesn't like France. I do like <laughs> France. Great wine. <laughs> I, I if I mean if I had to, I'm gonna take pick, Sean's approach. Fuck him. It's true. You gotta fuck, you gotta fuck him. Oh, if yeah. I was gonna pick one country to go visit, eat food, and drink wine, I would pick Italy over France. You would, really? Yeah, okay. I would, 100. percent So he's Team Rob. Yeah, 100. percent I yeah. I'm always on an island <laughs> over here. No, I, and I, I'm just teasing. A lot of this is just to, to banter back and forth with Carter. I I'm sure there's a ton of great cuisine in, in France. I just don't know about it, you know. You don't know what you don't know, right? So. I mean, duck all wrong. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a lot of duck. Yeah, I mean. And I love duck. Yeah. Man, I can. My wife doesn't like it, so I don't get to cook it as often as duck. Duck fat and oh, everything. Boys night. Boys night, for yeah. sure. Boys wine night. Yeah. Remember, fat side down, start with a cold pan. Oh, I always start. I, I sous vide it. Oh, sous vide duck is, is yeah. amazing. And then throw it in the cast iron, get that yeah. fat rendered, and then ah, nice. blueberry demi glaze. And yeah. But even then, like I, I've had a couple different French duck dishes, but I think like it's hard I, to think of it, I, isn't it. I'd rather go to Bel Air and have some Peking duck. Like I like honestly. Oh, Peking duck is one of my favorite yeah. dishes. That's what I'm saying. Like absolutely. I, yeah. I think the more the more the more we're talking about this, the more I think. Yeah. Asian food is my jam. Oh, I mean, Asian food's my favorite, too. Yeah. Um, Love Asian food. Well, okay, but but 
But I mean, I'm going to say, like, man, a chicken cordon bleu, a, a, a duck a la orange, a, you know, a, um, like, I love a good quiche. I mean, quiche is amazing. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I like a good quiche, too. I think it's probably the time value, though. Because French cooking is just like so technical. You're gonna like, all right, I'm gonna go in the, I'm gonna go in the kitchen and handful a croissant for an hour and a half. Yeah, he that, makes I a mean, great that, point. That's Carter. a good point. Or a hollandaise sauce. I mean, like you know the. That's yeah. I made it this morning. I made it yeah. this morning. The whisking, etc. Yeah, made one this morning. Not a big deal. It's a complicated holiday. cuisine. I mean, eggs Benedict is a French is a French dish. Um, okay, I would say that's a home run. Yeah, that's one of. I mean, from a breakfast yeah. food, that's one of my favorite things, and I think it's just a a versatile dish that you can play with and have fun. I mean, you can change oh, yeah. the, the bread that you want to use. You can change the protein yep. from the, the Canadian bacon. Canadian bacon can't be the traditional. What's the traditional on a on an Eggs Benedict in France? I don't know. It's something to look up. It's probably my, like, my, it's probably some pate. It's probably some pate really? that takes like 48 hours to make. <laughs> <laughs> to his point earlier. Uh, well, I mean, you got to give it like, so okay. one of the things, and uh, have you been to France before? No. Okay. So one thing that I will say as a student, who went to France and I uh, did a, like a choir tour in in France. Oh, that's cool. Um, so, if you went to, there are bakeries all over the place, and very inexpensive. You can get top quality baked goods in France, very cheap. And and, and I say that that is probably the thing they do the best. Is the bread? Is the bread? You know, they just. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think French I, bread I, is probably the best bread. Pastry on the planet. is. France is king. There's no country that does pastry as good as France. I mean, uh, I would say, I would say Italy's a close second. I mean, I've seen Stanley Tucci's show. He's went to some really nice bakery. Have you guys watched that show? No, no I haven't. No. You know, it's uh, so there's 20 different regions in Italy, and his show season one was he covered the first six. He goes to each region and dives into what the culture is, what the people are like, what they cook, the wines they drink, the foods they eat, all this That's stuff cool. on each region. So it's really, it's entertaining and it's uh, interesting and it's educational. So I, I really, as a, as a fan of Italian food and, yeah. and wine, it's really an interesting series. What's it watch. called? Uh, Stanley Tucci uh, Exploring Italy. Interesting, okay. Yeah, it's on every Sunday night on a, uh, a horrible network, but it's on nonetheless, uh, CNN. I will say, like, they're CNN does a good job of like the kind of exploring the world type yeah, yeah. documentary type show. Yeah, I think that Bourdain was one. CNN yeah, absolutely, he was. Yeah. He, uh, he was. But so. um, but yeah, it, like as far as France goes, I think it is just it, we just don't have a huge. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but we just don't have a huge French population in the United States. Well, I also don't. So, in the United States, we're going off on a huge tangent here. Yeah, so we, are. we can I know, stop. I know. But we are. sorry, we the can just end other that. The Italians and I mean down through Asia, like America's takes to a lot of the like I, I guess quote unquote peasant food of various different countries. Right? Look, I think every country. To your point, Sean, I think this is what you're saying. Every country that we get cuisine from, it's it's from the poor people of that country. Exactly. Yeah. It's not from some rich. I mean, you think about the pastas, the, the four room, the pastas of Rome, carbonara, one of our favorites. Yeah. It's pasta, guanciale, some egg, and pecco romano cheese. It's four ingredients, but yeah. it's fantastic. Well, it's simplicity. I mean, that, that's, that's my point. Definitely... It's, it's what do we have, and how can we make it work? Exactly, yeah. And, yeah. and that's where all the I feel like. The innovative dishes that have translated here have come from, right? Like, I mean, even like you go through every region in Asia, right? Like, the vast majority of the the food that we eat here is traditional, quote unquote, peasant food from yeah from those regions, right? And I I don't really know what French peasant food is. Maybe it is pastry and, and I think it's and I bread, think it's bread so and I, cheese. I, maybe, yeah. maybe it is just bread and cheese. I mean, maybe that is the yeah. the French. And, 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 you know, honestly, like, uh, you know, my, my wife is uh, Russian, so, you know, we've talked about that on the show. Um, crepes, you know, they call them blini over there, um, definitely inspired from, from France. But mm-hmm. they're a very dominant, they, you know, they're, they're present in their, their, their menu. And the French just had an influence there. 
Um, I, they, I think that's interesting, though. It's a good point. Like, like once again, like the French influence from a food perspective across the globe is apparent. But to Rob's point, like name, like you know, in your top ten dishes, is there a, a traditional French dish in yeah. your top ten? And I'd say no, but I think in my top ten, there's probably still going to be three or four that are influenced influenced by Absolutely. French. Absolutely. So, what's the best way to cook a steak? Reverse sear, sous vide for me. Oh, is but, it really? Yeah. Well, if I'm cooking for ten people for a dinner party, I'm going to sous vide it. it. That's definitely a French style. I think best is relative. No, no, no. I, I don't. I told you techniques, sauces, yeah. and pastry. They're known for it. Sous vide is the is the best way to get like I think the best average outcome. Oh yeah. Right, I would like, say not even average outcome. I'd say get the, the best, you know, kind of premier outcome, the ultimate. Oh, yeah, no, it's it's delicious, it's perfectly right? cooked. It's just always perfectly cooked yeah. every time, right? But, like, yeah. you know, you reverse sear and do, like, you know, a, a great, great, great job. It might end up turning better out, like, than, you know, going through, like, a full sous vide process. Because to, right? uh, to me, reverse sear is a little bit of a variation of sous vide. You know, you get in the internal yep. temperature. The only thing is you can't leave it. You know, right. sous vide, I can leave it for an extra two hours. It ain't going anywhere. It's staying at right. 130, what I wanted at, until I finish it off in the right. cast iron. Where I've got to pull it, let it rest, and sear it off with the reverse sear. I made the comment to you at steak because if I'm only cooking two steaks for me and my wife, I'm not going to bag them, tag them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get the water. Go. I mean, right. I can just throw them in the oven, reverse sear them to 128, pull them out, sear them off, and I'm done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Versus so it's, it's, you know, what makes it easier? I, I will say I've explored, like, smoking steaks recently. Yeah, no, that, that works. It, it's, I've had, like, two great success stories and two not-so-great success are, stories. Are we right? on, a, like, a pellet? or, or uh, A pellet, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, you can do that. Okay, like, I'm going to just pause here for this. We need to go back to that Brunello. I think we've given it a little bit of time. Here. Yeah, yeah. And, and we probably just talked for like 30 minutes. And yeah. while we're doing that, why don't we uh, run through. We, we started to talk about Italy, and, and I got us off on talking about the lack of food in France. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is never going to die. <laughs> uh, so let's, We're just going to have to go, guys. Let's run through the wines of Italy and the regions that you and I enjoyed. You okay. Know? Okay. So obviously Chianti, Clasco, we just you know drove that home with Brunello. But where yeah. else would you like to go, Matt? Uh, I mean Piedmont, uh, Barbaresco, Barolo. Uh, we're talking about the Nebbiolo grape here, um, and very, Fantastic. very good. Uh, you know, it, it's definitely an area you have to explore. Hundred uh, um, percent. Used used to be thought with Barolo specifically, you had to lay it down. 10, 12, 15 years before it was ready to drink. Uh, they've all obviously changed their their techniques and kind of their winemaking process. So you can approach them a little bit younger. You may want to, you know, decant them for a little while. Yeah. We always say decant. Decant means get the sediment out. There won't be any sediment in the young Barolo. Uh, this is more the oxygen. To, yeah, yeah, it's more to give it some air and yeah. let it open up a little Those bit. Those tannins are going to be really tight. Because I know a lot of people getting into wine might have heard that, you know, you, you can't drink Barolo unless you want to lay them down. Now, young guys like you, Sean, can can buy those and lay them down if you want to. Mm-hmm. But uh, for older people getting into wine, it, it needs to be a region that you still explore because today's world, you can you, you can approach those a little bit earlier. So I say Barolo, absolutely go try those. Barbaresco, for sure. And so Barbaresco, uh, <clears throat> same varietal, just a, like a different elevation that's growing on it, right? Right. A little bit different elevation, a little bit different soils. Yeah. Uh, different region, you know, within the yeah. region, you know, different mountain slopes. And but the good thing about Barbaresco is you can, you can, you don't have to lay that down for. It's not as tannic as the Barolo, so it's a little more approachable earlier. Yeah. Uh, so if you had a 16 Barbaresco right now, drink away, baby. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's good. And if you haven't heard the episode on Barolo and Barbaresco talking about the Nebbiolo grape, we just did an episode recently with John. Fodora out of New York, the wine journalist, and uh, had a great conversation just kind of exploring that grape in that region. So mm-hmm. go check that out if you haven't heard it. Yeah. It's way better than this one. He's a wine journalist. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, I, get the, you, get the, you get the B team with me. Today. I know I, I, a couple of areas that I'd like to mention in, in, in Italy, like I, I'd say don't discount Sicily uh, because there are some good wines that come out of Sicily. Um there, um, I, I think you bring up a great point. I think Sicily is flying under the radar. Uh, mm-hmm. Mount Etna is on a volcano, 
and I mean wines that are vines that are growing in that volcanic ash. I mean, to your yeah. point, just great wines. Yeah, and, great wines. And and then going back to, to Tuscany, I don't know if we talked about super Tuscans or kind of how that is or what what that classification is. Uh, we could probably do an entire episode on talking about that. Uh, what they w- the the thing is, super Tuscans take traditional French uh, varietals and they've brought them over to Italy and started growing them. Gosh, how long ago was it? Uh, in the it became more prominent in like the '60s, '70s. Yeah, where a couple of producers were started to do it, and and you know obviously they have rules in, in old world that if you're not growing these grapes in this region, you can't get the classification of DOC or DOCG. Yeah, so they, didn't, they were classified as a table wine, which meant cheap and not very good. But uh, come to find out, they're absolutely fantastic and really expensive now. Yes, some gotcha. of them can. Well, so they still don't have their like the regulatory sort of. They do now. They do now. Oh, they do now. They gotcha. Do now. That, gotcha. That's a recent development. Okay. Uh, but, okay. But uh, I, I'd say in that classification is like within the Super Tuscan, it can be a broad. Uh, We're going to open one up tonight. The blue one, the blue label right in front of you. The oh yeah, this one. Yeah. yeah, this guy right here. This is the uh, the baby Sassicaia, They call it. So we'll open that one up tonight and see what you think about that. This is going to be more like your. It's not going to be like your cab, but it can, it's going to a California cab, but it's going to have the same types of grapes in there. Mm-hmm. So we'll see what you think about the style from Italy using those grapes for yeah, what you've been drinking in California. I'm I'm really interested to try that then. Yeah. So so they they have they can have a little bit more creative liberty a, with. I, their... I just want to drink whatever the fuck we're drinking right now. Though. Oh yeah, this Brunello. Oh, that Brunello is banging. Can... Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. And this is why Brunello is my favorite <laughs> favorite style of wine that comes out of Italy. <laughs> But there's also, I think you mentioned one earlier, but there's some little regions within Tuscany and, and Italy, you know, but within Tuscany that I found, Vino Noble and Montepulciano uh, Abruzzo. Yeah. Uh, Vino Noble, uh, Montepulciano. And so a little confusing there. Montepulciano is a town and it's also a grape. Yeah. So you have to kind of know which one you're, are you, am I getting Sangiovese from Montepulciano the town or am I getting the grape Montepulciano from Abruzzo? So mm-hmm. you have to kind of know there. But both really good and some great price. I love a Sacramentino. It's a big, bold, kind oh, of yeah. big wine. You know, if you like a big Syrah or something, this is going to be something that would be similar to that. So uh, Italy, to me, I think a lot of people, when they hear Italian wine, they think Chianti, Ber- Brunello, Barolo, Barbaresco, and that's kind of what they know as the big yeah. wines of Italy. But there's, you know, you dive in a little deeper. There's, there's a lot to explore within, within Italy. And you, you know, you bringing up Carter, Sicily. I think that's a fantastic region for people to really put yeah. on the radar and start looking into. You. Sardinia, I think yeah. they have their own kind of wines, and you know, like there's, there's a lot. I mean, Italy is obviously, you know, we're talking semantics here on, you know, what do you want to do, France or Italy or whatever? I mean, yeah. you know, they're both. Fantastic wine regions, yeah. you know, whole I, world in general, and great yeah. values. That's the whole point of this. Not the whole point uh, is to kind of <laughs> let you know what these regions are, but the the big driving point from my perspective was the value you get. You know, not only is it exploring new areas and, and letting your palate kind of experience these things, but it's uh, the value that you get in buying wines from these countries and regions versus what you pay in, in California. Understand why California is as expensive as it is, but doesn't mean and there's good quality that comes out of california there is no doubt absolutely but 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 yeah this is you know you start getting into old world man you can find some values and also you just you know it just opens your mind up to different types of wines yeah you know like it's a really broad world and there's a lot of really good stuff out there so you know carter because sean's going to be a returning guest now yes uh i think the next episode might be exploring other new worlds. Yeah. Argentina. Argentina, uh, Argentina yeah. Chile. Yeah. yeah. Very great stuff there. Too. I'm absolutely down. Yeah. That'd yeah. be a fun one to yeah. let him. Y- y'all can, y'all, y'all, I can, I can grow my wine journey with you guys. Yeah. Like, yeah. Absolutely. On, a, on, a, on a repeating basis. We're, we're your wine guides. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm here for it. So, absolutely. so Rob, I mean, I must attest, you know, I'm a whiskey guy first. I, I've always been a whiskey guy first, but man, wine freaking rocks. It does. I mean, it is. It yeah, is. no, it's, this is. The, so Ooh, to I get into, to get into this, like, I feel like 
this Chianti number one is probably like more approachable. Yeah, I think right from like a a mass appeal perspective, right? Like number two on like my third drink, I started appreciating it a lot more. You're, you're getting to notice every little part of the party. You've mm-hmm. got the nerd group. You've got the uh, the cool kids. you got the pranksters. I mean, there's a lot going on in this yeah. class. Yeah, like in another 15 minutes, I think you're going to see another change. Yeah, it, it, it's, I mean. Ooh, it's a fantastic. I love well, this one. There's a lot more complexity after letting it sit for a while. Like I do, I get some like, I, I guess it's grass. But I think number two to me to compare it to bourbon, like, Number two is like a little higher proofed, but I don't think it actually is higher proofed. It's like, it's one of those like, I'm trying to think of like a bourbon comparison, which is, uh, it, it's like one of those like 95, 96 proof bourbons that hit like it's like a 110 or like a 110 bourbon that hits like it's like a 123. Like, and maybe that's the tannins. I don't know. But like, uh, to me, like, uh, yeah, just to, uh, to tie that in a little bit. So we were at the beach last week. Because Rob was, like, recording awesome episodes, and I was just sitting there, like, (laughs) baking my body in the sun. Uh, You were enjoying your time with your wife pre-baby. Yes, that is correct. Um, And not working at all. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that's another conversation. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, um, I, at the beach, they have little 350s of Knob Creek 9-year. Okay. I poured some of that Knob Creek 9-year, and I was like... Do you know how much is going on in this right now? Like, this is so good. It hits way above its weight class for like for a seven fifty for like thirty six dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is awesome, right? Well, that, that's what I I today's world. Uh, you know, for I don't know why it started or where it came from, but everybody wants to know what they have. What food am I eating? What am I putting in my body? Yeah. Where Where did that cow graze? Where was that cheese made? You know, what, what, all this matters now, and, and that's translated into wines. Not that wine geeks before didn't do it, but I just think it's on a bigger scale now. Mm-hmm. Uh, people getting into wine aren't just drinking wine because it tastes good. They really want to explore the glass in the bottle. And I think the same goes for whiskey. I mean, look at our whiskey collections. We have grand, dads, grandfathers, and great-grandfathers that, if we remember when they drank, they found, I like wild turkey. I like Jim Beam. And they drink the same damn thing playing cards with their buddies every week, and that's yeah. what it was. Mm-hmm. We want to go, how can it be different? How can it change? And we have this more, to me, a more open mind and open palate to really explore and think about what's in my glass and don't go in going, you know, we don't have a bar or a standard that right. this is where it needs to be, and if it's not, I'm not going to like it. We mm-hmm. understand, especially with wine, you know, trying to understand, even though it's Cabernet from Bordeaux or Cabernet from California, yeah. what's the winemaker doing? What's the different soils? What's the weather type that makes it different? And then wh- how does that translate to what's in my glass versus what it is in Napa? And I think that's what makes wine and spirits so much fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But but I think the, the purpose of this is, Sean, you think you're going to be, you know, exploring some old world wines now? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think... Kind of the direction we're going through, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, like the it's weird because some of the tastes I'm naming are not like it's not like an appetizing taste, right? Like it's like, oh, this is grassy, and I taste a little, I taste a little dirt, and I smell a little dirt. Oh, I get it. And like, yeah, and it's it, it's a weird. Oh yeah, it's a weird connection it's I'm not making. Like, oh, I get caramel. But it's in a good fruit. way. Yeah, you know? yeah, right. It's not a normal food, like like. You know, this, this, uh, it's not a pleasing descriptor. Correct. Yeah. But it's, it's extremely interesting. Whereas I, I think mm. in general with like my, you know, weekly, you know, cab glass or whatever, like just kind of punching me in the face with, you Fruit. know, yeah, here's yeah. raspberry, grape, sometimes Black some fruit, blueberry, plums, yeah, 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 plums, whatever, Stone like fruit. <laughs> Little avoc- <laughs> Who doesn't like avocado? <laughs> yeah, in their wine I mean, mm. uh, you know, I, I'm getting a lot of like, yeah. But but to your point, you know, there's in old world you get a lot of more of the you know notes that don't necessarily sound appetizing. Like I get like hay. Yeah, exactly. That, you know, yeah. I, but I think it's great. Yeah, and, and, and it's you know like anything else, it's developing your palate. We were all were kids. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm kind of generalizing. 
But most of us as kids didn't like to eat a lot of vegetables and things like that. You know, try to put a Brussels sprout in front of me. Today, love a Brussels sprout. Love so, right. Yeah. You, same in wine Absolutely. as you go through the journey. Same in, in, in bourbon. You know, when you started in bourbon, I'm sure it's like... I, I just want friends. something that's smooth. I want it to be about 90 proof. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now and it's, and yeah. now it's like, yeah. you know, if it ain't 120, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm flavor, you yep. know, so... Yep. Yeah. Uh, It'll, it'll happen, but uh, same thing, I think, with the characteristics and, and the descriptions that we're talking about that we get on some old world and uh, the leather and some of the old dirt and mushrooms and things. It, it doesn't sound as, you know, appealing, but it's, it's really some, some beautiful oh, yeah. that you get on. Good yeah. stuff. When you yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. And this a lot, this a lot is lot absolutely food. delicious. Yeah. 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 You guys ready to uh, cut this down and, and go eat some food? And drink I am some more definitely wine? ready Let's to do, do it. that. Yeah. Sean, man, I had a blast having you on. Thank you guys for having me on. I, and, uh, I hope I, I hope it was mildly entertaining for people. Oh yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And uh, just so uh, everybody knows, we're going to have a badass meal and uh, and we're going to open some more wine. So you guys should be jealous. Yeah, you yeah. you should all be jealous relative Poke, to poking the, at the list. <laughs> just wow. kidding. Wow. Re- relative to the number of bottles in front of me right now. You guys should all be jealous. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of yeah. bottles. I don't know that we're going to open them all. We ain't yeah. open all of them, but, yeah, you know. I, yeah, we should not open all of them. <laughs> Carter's three that he brought for $500, and then Rob's uh, ten. <laughs> three. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 could, I could make that list. I know you could. I know, you you could make that list yesterday. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, no, th- thank you very much for having me on, guys. Yeah, I, it's been I, a lot of fun. I, oh, yeah, I had a lot of fun. For sure. And, and you'll be back next journey uh, around uh New New World New location. New Absolutely. World. Let's do yeah. it. Let's do it. That'll be a lot of fun. Thanks, everybody, for listening to this episode of Food, Wine, and Whiskey in Your Own Backyard. And until our next episode, enjoy your next pour. Cheers, everybody. God, this is delicious.